Hello, uh, this is Sunil Sundaraj with In The Zone. Uh, today, I'm happy to welcome in uh, Kyle J. Andrews uh, from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, Kyle, thank you, uh, you know, for taking some time out to uh, speak with me today. Oh, no, I definitely appreciate it. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk with you and, you know, just enjoy the conversation. I know we always we always talk on Twitter, so it's, yeah. it's finally great to be able to talk with you and, well, kind of in person. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, hey, you've done, uh, I mean, your accomplishments speak for itself, uh, Kyle. You've done some tremendous work, you know, as I said, over the last several years. Uh, can you, you know, first, you know, as I said, you're with the Baltimore Sun, and we talked about before uh, we came on the air that, uh, you know, you're going to be leaving shortly, you know, as I said, for the Center Daily Times. Uh, can you talk about, I guess, you know, just the last couple of years, you know, the work you've done, especially, you uh, uh, covering high school sports, I think uh, you've indicated, I think, in the greater Baltimore region for the Baltimore Sun, uh, Kyle. Well, yes. Um, so I, I think high school sports in the Baltimore area is, um, you know, it's one of the best. On, I mean, well, I would say it's not a it's not a secret. <laughs> now <laughs> it's not a secret, but it was one of the best kept secrets at one point. I, I would say about like 10 years ago actually when I was in high school that Baltimore was like a hotbed for talent. And it seems like, you know, the national media has seemed to caught up to that. Um, especially with, um, you know, the once Carmelo Anthony went to the NBA, you know, he went to Towson Catholic high school north of Baltimore. Um, you know, you had, you had a number of guys in the NBA now, Will Barton, he's an, another guy from Baltimore. Um, you know, of course, Sam Cassell was from Dunbar High School, the legendary Dunbar High School. So, you know, all of those things kind of set the tone for what I'm doing now. And, um, you know, and I was just on the basketball and we're not even talking about football. Like with football, you have Tavon Austin. He's another Baltimore guy. Um, and, you know, recently, the cool part is that I've covered so many student athletes that have you know gone on to do bigger and better things um you know where from from coming from this area and these kids you know it's not just about the talent that they put on the field or on the court or wherever they play but it's about you know the things that they're accomplishing off the field too yeah you know i, I had a story about dante thornton who's at oregon now he actually went to my alma mater mount st joseph and Dante is, you know, an outstanding kid more than just an athlete. You know, he um, had a had like a three eight GPA, and then he also was a All American football player. I mean, who does that? Yeah. Yeah, know. <laughs> you know, that, that's a tough thing to to balance, and he yeah. balanced everything. And he also was a track star. And you know, to to be able to do those two things, I, I think about him as one of the first people, and then. Another person on the girls' side in basketball was uh, Claire Neff and Angel Reese. They, Angel Reese, as we know, plays for that University of Maryland team. Uh, Angel's outstanding. Her, she has, comes from an outstanding family. Um, Julian Reese, her brother, actually plays at St. Francis currently, and he's headed to Maryland to play basketball too. Another really good kid. And then Claire, um, who is a – she's at JMU, but she originally committed to play at Clemson, and she went to – a school called Maryville Preparatory School. And, um, you know, just seeing those kids um, and those three are probably the biggest in terms of, you know, stories that I, I kind of followed in the, in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and their parents and family members have opened up, you know, a bunch of avenues for me to, to kind of get to know everybody else within that field and those spaces. So, you know, those things really mean a lot to me, being able to cultivate those relationships with coaches, players, athletes, or well, coaches, players, parents, and, yeah. you know, administrators, and, and even other reporters, too. Yeah. No, it, well said. I mean, it's like, it's just an entire community, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, again, it, it goes beyond, you know, players, coaches. I mean, it's just like everybody's involved in it, to, you know, so you build that network up. You know, I, I'm curious, uh, Kyle, that you've covered a, a number of sports, you know, so not even on the uh, professional level, uh, college level, but can you talk about the high school level, whether it's what soccer, softball, 
across basketball, football, I think even baseball. Can you talk about and just that approach, you know, to, to each sport, you know, I said, um, I mean, it does take, you know, said quite a bit of work and, you know, expertise and you've been able to, again, build that up. Uh, can you just, just, just talk about that? Oh yes, absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm actually grateful for the fact that, you know, I'm going to be able to continue that in my next position that I'm working at with the Senate daily times, yeah. you know, just covering multiple sports and, you know, it keeps you sharp on things because you see so many multiple, multiple, uh, multi-sport athletes and, you know, seeing their movements from football, being able to translate the baseball or being able to translate the basketball, vice versa. You know, you see the, on the girls' side, you see a lot of soccer players that also play basketball, but then they turn around and play lacrosse. And, you know, all those different movements and even some of the coaches that, you know, tell me they want their kids to play multiple sports. So you get that kind of backstory to it. But then also you have to be on your toes in terms of, knowing how each sport operates you know when i first got to to the sun i i had never co- covered lacrosse mm-hmm. well, lacrosse was actually the second sport or the second game that i covered at the sun um i covered baseball which was that was awesome you know i had always covered baseball was actually the first sport i covered professionally i covered the orioles for uh fox sports 1340 mm-hmm. um so baseball was fairly easy to cover but you know, when I got into lacrosse, I'm like, how do you do this? And, you know, uh, Brent Kennedy, my editor, he actually pulled, took me under his wing and he was like, hey, Kyle, like, this is how I do it. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know your writing style. Um, I want to get to know how you cover certain things. And so he he lets me know. He's like, OK, well, what you do is that you put the you, you put the score down, of course, you put the team. I mean, what time the team scored? You put the team down and then you put the team, the, the player's number mm-hmm. who scored. And so I would have a running list of, you know, each player that scored at what time. And yeah. so that's kind of gone on with, you know, lacrosse, field hockey, soccer. I mean, soccer is fairly, I mean, I would say soccer is probably the easiest sport to cover mm-hmm. because most of it is anecdotal uh, work. So you're writing a story and most of the time there won't be a score unless the team is extremely good or the goalie or the defense isn't too good. But, you know, you, you get those different things that you wouldn't necessarily get in a, uh, you know, in a perfect, if you covered a beat for a, you know, a local team for a, prof- for a professional team or even a college team. And so the you know, other thing too is covering high school football is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, you know, you don't get the stat sheets like you do in college. You don't get the stat sheets like you do in the NFL. Um, and you have to take all the stats yourself unless it's a, a, a playoff game or specifically some high school creates their own stat keeping uh, service. So if you don't have those things, you know, you can't necessarily take the stats like that. And so I've had to kind of teach myself how to take annotate uh, really, you know, shorthand notes to make sure I'm covering the game the correct way. Yeah. And, um, you know, those things have been fun. I've, I've enjoyed that. Um, you know, I've had a, a great time learning and uh, getting to be able to become a better reporter just because I've covered high school sports. And, yeah. you know, I, I think that's a, that's a journey that I think is incredibly valuable for a lot of young reporters. Um, because sometimes you see people who have never covered high school sports and then they, you know, it's, it's not necessarily, I don't think it makes you ungrateful not to necessarily cover high school sports, but some of the things that you learn from covering high school sports in terms of being able to network, being able to get to know coaches, be able, being able to, you know, use people skills. Um, I think those things are incredibly important, you know, because not everything Sometimes when things break down, you have to go and, um, you know, you have to do things yourself. It's a very hands-on job, and it's something that, you know, will teach you to become a better reporter for the future. No, I agree. And I think, you know, communication is so essential. And, uh, you know, through email and now, of course, with social media, there, you know, some of these, a lot of these coaches are on there, you know, you're able to contact them and, you know, email with the players as well. 
I wanted to ask you, like, you know, working for the Baltimore Sun, what that's meant to you personally, you know, for you know, such a prestigious, you know, publication, you know, and, you know, growing up in that area, what, what that means to you, you know, I said, uh, Kyle. So, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. You know, when I was a kid, I'll never forget this. My grandmother and I, we were, it was when the Ravens were on their run to their first Super Bowl. I was about six years old. And I'll never forget that my grandmother and I took clippings from each, you know, win that they would have each week. Um, starting with that, with that um, wild card win, and we kept putting the clippings on each banner, like we had a purple banner. And so I would read every story. And after I was done reading the story, my grandmother would paste every clipping on it. And so we had it on both sides. And then eventually when the Ravens got to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl, we folded up the, the purple banner with the press clippings on it and we put it away. And, you know, another thing, too, that stood out to me was that I had the 2131, you know, record breaking uh, newspaper from from the sun. So when you see those two things and you realize like this, not only is this uh, newspaper part of the history of Baltimore itself, but it's part of my history, you know, and I think those two things really brought it, it just brought it all together like this is who I feel like uh you know it was it felt like destiny almost you know and I mean some things happen just because they happen and they you know fall into places what made you you know whatever way mm -hmm. and I just think that that was that was the most amazing thing just to see my name in a newspaper that I read since I was six years old yeah you know and so I've, I've enjoyed every moment of it. And, you know, like I said, Baltimore will always be my home, no matter if I'm leaving or not. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely, I've enjoyed my time there for sure. Yeah, I, I think there's no better, you know, feeling seeing your byline, you know, your name and the byline. It's just, it's great. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, moving up, uh, what, to, to State College, you know, PA, you know, I said, I think that's where, uh, the Center Daily Times uh, is located. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, you know, just to get your feelings on that and just, you know, again, starting, you know, that, you know, on May 3rd there. Uh, uh, can you just talk about that, Kyle? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it, it was funny. Um, I, when the first time, so I had actually applied in June. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get the job the first time. But when I, they, they gave me a call back a couple about like eight months later and said they had an opening and you know when I saw the opportunity I had to jump at it and um they it was just it was an amazing thing that you know I was able to work for <laughs> work for a paper that covers Penn State I mean Penn yeah. State athletes always come from a lot of them come from Baltimore mm -hmm. um in multiple sports uh, a lot of women's lacrosse players and i want to say the men's side too they all come from baltimore um you also get a uh a contingent of kids from the area that also go to penn state uh for football and so you know seeing those two things and then also still being able to contribute to the press uh, the prep side of it you know i still i'm still covering high school sports so that that'll be fun to cover it in a different environment to see how you know, athletes are represented in those areas, especially in center Pennsylvania. Um, I think that area has a, a lot of talent um, and, and it's going to be really fun to do it. And not only that, but my girlfriend actually is a Penn State alum. So, okay. <laughs> you know, it feels like everything's coming full circle for yeah. me and her. So it's That's really fun. You know, I, I was looking at uh, your uh, background, like, you know, just previous, you know, jobs you worked and like, what stood out is that some of the jobs, like, you know, that you initially worked at, you actually came back and worked the second time. I, I had to ask, you know, uh, being a, a groundskeeper for the Baltimore Orioles and then uh, coming back to work as an event staff. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, if you could just uh, talk about that. I mean, uh, I, I just I, I just think that, that you know, I have the utmost respect for you, you know, said being able to, you know, work those type of positions. But I, I'm sure that they, they were so fulfilling, you know, to you, uh, Kyle. Oh, yeah, they... Um... You know, a bunch of people, when they hear me talk, they're like, you love to talk. 
<laughs> feel like you talk a lot and you like to interact with a ton of different people who, you know, might not fit together. Like I have a slew of different friends and, yeah. you know, that all started from working at those different jobs. And, you know, I, I worked at a shoe store while, you know, right after I worked for the Orioles. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was on, this was the event staff. Uh, but when I worked for the Orioles the original time with, you know, the grounds crew, I just thought to myself, I'm like, man, I really get to meet professional athletes. Like this is outstanding to me. And it's always so crazy to me as a, as a kid to have to do that or get to meet people. I was 17 years old and, you know, I would, I talked to Adam Jones, you know, or I talked to Chris Tillman or, you know, on the rare occasions, I would talk to players from other teams. Like, you know, I, I met, Alex Rodriguez and Derek Jeter as a kid, as a 17 year old kid. And uh, Mark Teixeira actually went to my high school. So I ran onto the field one time to change the bases up. Mm-hmm. And I started talking to Mark because I, I was like, can I get first base? And they were like, yeah, go ahead, take first. Why do you want first so bad? Mm-hmm. And so I, I go to talk to Mark. I'm like, hey, I'm a St. Joe. Uh, I'm, I'm at Mount St. Joe right now. Um, and, you know, it's good to finally meet you and all this other stuff. And Mark was like the nicest person that I've ever talked to on a on a baseball field to that point. It was it, it's just like, you know, getting to meet different people over time, getting to meet, you know, coaches, getting to meet Buck, Buck Showalter was it, I mean, it's still a very nice guy. But when he it, it's funny when I went to I, I worked on the Orioles grounds crew then go work on the event staff. Then when I get to cover the Orioles the next year, Buck's like, I remember you. And I'm like, how do you remember me? He was like, how did I remember, not remember you? You're like six foot six. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I corrected him. I was like, well, I'm six foot seven. And he was like, yeah, yeah. He was just like, all I know is that you're tall and I can remember you. And so yeah. from that point, uh, you know, being able to connect the dots on those relationships and saying, you know, maybe if I make a good impression on someone now, down the line, they'll be able to, you know, open up to me or, you know, I could get to know this person for who they are, for who they actually are and be able to re- write this story the correct way. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those experiences allow me to kind of, you know, take other people's, uh, you know, in, like the things that they do on a regular basis into account, you know, for instance, like, Ozzie Newsom. <laughs> I have a funny story about Ozzie and, and Terrell Suggs. So I used to work at a, at a Mercedes Benz dealership. And um, this was in 2017 during the summer. And I'll never forget that whole summer. I'm sitting there just waiting and waiting and waiting. Just, um, you know, try to clean cars and stuff. And I see this giant muscular guy who's bald. He gets out of the car. It's Terrell Suggs. (laughs) And so I talk, you know, I started talking to Terrell and everything. And, you know, and then Ozzy came in maybe a couple hours later. And then they both, you know, rolled out of there. And this was, you know, in 2017. And then in 2018, I'm covering the Ravens. I see Ozzy Newsom. You know, I see Terrell Suggs. Terrell Suggs is like, I remember you from somewhere. <laughs> and that's and that's that's also, I mean, you wouldn't be able to get that story in, you know, a way bigger city, I don't think. I don't I don't think, you know, I feel like I, I don't I don't necessarily feel like I'm that important of a person. But when you see, you know, when you're in a small city or a smaller city like Baltimore. And you run into so many different athletes and, and people on a regular basis. Um, you know, just doing your job, you'll you'll run into those people. And so sometimes when you switch jobs, those cro- those paths will cross. And, and you know, it's a really fun experience. And I, I'm just grateful for the for the chance that I had to you know humble myself. And um, you know, I didn't have anything just handed to me. And I and I do appreciate that now uh, more than when I was young when. I was just like, oh, I want it now. So, you know, I, I definitely, I'm grateful for those experiences for sure. That's wonderful. You know, I wanted to pivot back to um, when you were at um, Daniel College. You, you worked as the sports editor there, and I thought, you know, that was important because you learned 
you know, quite a few skills there, you know, and uh, I'm just wondering as far as that preparing you, you know, for, you know, further, you know, I said uh, uh, employment and work. I just wanted to ask you about that, uh, Kyle. Yeah, so um, it's funny when I when I worked at McDaniel, I didn't necessarily know how to interview people. And that was something that, you know, I learned over time. I, I feel like my time at McDaniel, I, I wrote stories more as a blogger <laughs> than a than a reporter. And that's something that I had to learn, especially when I got to, um, you know, press box a year later. Um, so in 2014, I covered McDaniel football and I was a sports editor for, for just the first semester. And my friend Kelsey Mannix actually came back. Kelsey's actually the, uh, she's actually a reporter in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana now. Um, so it's funny how that all works out. Um, and I was just, you know, taking over for her as she was in Budapest, Hungary for, um, you know, our study abroad program that we have at McDaniel. And I had no idea what to do. You know, I kept trying to recruit. And I think that was my greatest trait as a, as a sports editor. Mm -hmm was that I was able to recruit people to write for the, for this uh, paper, mm -hmm. for the McDaniel Free Press. And, you know, that was something that I, you know, I, I never thought of myself as being the greatest writer back then, especially back then. Um, but one thing that I could do is get people who were better writers to come write with us. So you would get kids that were on the baseball team, but then would cover a basketball game. And I would edit their stories. With your kids on a on a football team, they were right about the basketball team, and I was able to recruit those kids and and a lot of uh, people in fraternities and a bunch of people in sororities. I, I was able to connect with them to get them to write about sports, mm -hmm. and so those things kind of you know allowed me to to learn more about some of the things that people were trying to accomplish um, in terms of their writing ability. So. You know, I took that when I went to press box the next year and I actually transferred from schools. Um, I went from, uh, what was it, uh, McDaniel to CCBC. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from that point, I, I really tried to learn more and I tried to pick more people's brains because I had never worked with professional journalists before. And now I got to see how they operate. And then in 2016, that's when I went to, you know, write for Baltimore uh, was it, um, no bullets forever. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. And I had worked, wrote for the Baltimore wire covering the Orioles and the Ravens. Then the following year, I went to cover the Ravens for, uh, Baltimore beat down and I had the Fox sports internship. So, you know, it was just learning from that experience from McDaniel and understanding that I'm not that great at this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to learn from other people and I need to be humble about the things that I'm doing. I can't just come in there thinking I'm the best at anything. And that's, that's something I've tried to take with me, you know, as much as possible. I'm going to pick 500 people's brains before. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> that can cause me to not jump into action soon enough sometimes, but, um, you know, it, it also allows me to actually learn and get to know people. So, um, and get to know how writing works. And um, I think I think that experience was useful for that as well. Yeah, I mean, some of these important skills, I mean, especially I think at Pressbox, you know, fact checking, uh, researching, editing. And, um, you know, what? Uh, one of the positions that um, was, you know, definitely, uh, again, you know, stood out to me was um, when uh, you worked for uh, the indoor football team, the Baltimore Benchants, you know, that the fact is that um, that, those were quite, um, there were quite a few responsibilities, you know, that uh, came along with that position, uh, Kyle. Oh, yeah. I was, I was young, too. And that was the biggest thing. I, I interned, or I guess I wrote for them. And, you know, I tried to boost their communications as possible, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't last too long. But that experience was great because it allowed me to you know, get to know the players and um, get to know the coaches and talk with as many people as possible and also spread their uh, brand and, and promote their brand. So that was, that was great. And then, you know, of course, uh, you know, with technology, you know, these days, I mean, you got, of course, you got into podcasting. Uh, if you want to talk about that, Kyle, because 
I mean, that's just important. You know, I said, uh, I know you, uh, I think when uh, you were at 105.7 uh, The Fan, you were hosting with, uh, I think it's Joe Serpico of uh, Fox Sports 1340 AM. If you can talk about that, and you, you host a podcast currently. So if you just wanted to dive into that and just talk about, you know, just adding to your, you know, repertoire, you know, just, you know, with, uh, uh, and skills as well. So it's it's funny when I got the in well when I started working for 1057 part time um and covering the Ravens and everything one thing that I learned was how to you know cut audio. Mm-hmm. And so I used what was it Adobe Audition and I used Audacity prior to, to the to edit my uh different you know sites and everything um or I guess not sites uh podcasts and so Joe I Joe learned how to do it himself as well. And Joe's a Temple grad, so big Philly sports fan, but he moved down here when he was younger. So, you know, he kind of shares loyalties <laughs> to Baltimore. So we started our own uh, podcast after we actually, Joe actually was the editor at Baltimore Beatdown. And I mean, not Baltimore Beatdown, Baltimore Wire. Mm-hmm. And he left. And then I left with him because I was like, you know what? This guy, he he understands where I'm coming from with my writing, and I trust him. Mm-hmm. Um, and it worked out because we, you know, had a podcast together for a while, offside position. Um, you know, Joe's still one of my really good friends, even though we don't do the podcast anymore, just because of both of us being so busy, busy right now. But, yeah. you know, I just think about all those skills that he kind of passed down to me as someone who all, he went to journalism school. You know, so I, I never went to journalism school. I was an English major, you know, that had a linguistics minor. So I'm, you know, completely, uh, that was not, <laughs> that was not something that I learned how to do from school. It was something I had to learn on the fly. And so Joe was very instrumental in that. And then taking those radio, um, you know, those things I learned from radio and then applying them to journalism and my work. And, you know, and podcasting and everything else. And then YouTube as well. Yeah. I just think that, you know, those things are incredibly important. I, I never did a stand up before. You know, I, I think that's something that a lot of journalists never experience, um, especially on the written side. They, they never think, OK, I'm going to have to do TV sometimes. Yeah. But as we see people on ESPN all the time, a lot of them weren't tv reporters when they first started they were most of them were writers they were you know newspaper reporters um and i and i think of uh you know a perfect example to me that stands out of stephen a smith i mean we all know stephen a was at um, the philadelphia inquirer covering alan iverson and um you know he had to cut his teeth through uh, initially being a reporter and then after a while he had to build an on-camera presence and that's something I learned at uh, 105.7 too, is that, you know, I need to learn how to do this, uh, you know, this on-camera work and become a multimedia journalist and be as multifaceted as possible because in today's field, you can't just be a, a one trick pony. Yeah. No, I agree. I, uh, technical skills play, you know, I mean, such an integral part of that. I mean, you know, that's the thing is that, uh, and as you know, I mean, I cover high school sports, you know, with, I mean, only pitchers with video and then, you know, being with, as you said, the interviewing part, you know, with coaches and players, I mean, you have to be, you know, as I said, skilled at that as well, you know, just in being able to multitask, you know, that's what it really uh, comes down to. Um, I just, oh, I almost <laughs> lost my train of thought here, but I, you know, I actually wanted to ask you also about, um, you know, there was another with fan side as well. That was another position that's that you, you know, worked there, I think, you know, twice before. I wanted to ask you about that. And of course, uh, SB Nation too, but, uh, you know, how those positions worked out for you as well, uh, Kyle. So fan side, Joe and I, you know, we worked there the first time with uh, the Baltimore Wire. Mm-hmm. And as things kind of went on with uh, fan side, they actually shut down their, um, to remember what it was they shut down their uh local site so they had you know sites dedicated to each city um and baltimore of course you know we had i guess they they had a a, a raven site called ebony the ebony bird which is the raven site and then the oriole site was called 
uh, birds watching. Mm -hmm. And so I jumped back and forth between the Baltimore wire. I jumped over there and then jumped over to the birds watcher. When it came to SB Nation, you know, you had the you had Baltimore Beatdown, you had Bullets Forever, and you had uh, Camden Chat. And I wrote for all three of those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always wanted to get into hockey coverage too, but uh, I never got the chance. I, I thought about covering. Um, I wanted. I always wanted to write about uh, Vegas, the Golden Knights. Um, I mean, a bunch of people on Twitter can see that I'm a huge Vegas Golden Knights fan. Uh, I tweet about it semi often. Um, but, um, you know, those, those are the things that, I mean, I was always a fan of those teams. So I decided, okay, let me, why not write about those teams and kind of cut my teeth doing this. So this is actually going to be the first time going to center daily times. I'm not covering a team that I'm a fan of. And I think that's an interesting, uh, experience as well, because I've never covered, I've never covered like, um, you know, a team outside of my area. Yeah. Uh, that's a big, <laughs> that's a very big thing to note. And I think that'll be able to also teach me how to become a more, you know, well-rounded reporter because of, you know, having a, having an even more objective eye to, you know, covering a certain sport too. Yeah. I, I just popped up in, into my head is as far as being a beat writer and just even the state of journalism, where you see it right now, because it said everything, you know, as far as print, you know, is moving to that digital side or has been. I, I, I just wanted to get your perspective, get your take on, you know, where you see the field right now, uh, uh, Kyle. Well, I think we need to invest more on local journalism. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's first and foremost. I think local journalism has kind of fallen to the wayside because of, you know, you have, you have these big uh, corporations that kind of jump in and say, well, you know, let's not focus on this community journalism. Let's, you know, push it more towards the cities or push it more, more towards, um, you know, areas where, you know, like national coverage, for instance, like where we're covering more things nationally or covering the bigger things in our local communities more than we are co covering the small things, more than we're covering, you know, somebody, somebody making it like, like a, a a, a dance recital for a uh, for a young student, or a um, you know just small things. I mean, I th I think if we continue to push away from our community reporter, it's going to hurt things in the long run. And we've run into a lot of news deserts all, all across the country where it'll be entire counties that don't have a newspaper to operate within, it. and that really hurts. I mean, I I can't think of. I'll be honest with you. I can't think of any newspaper west of Frederick in Maryland, you know, and that that's tough. I mean, I and it might be a newspaper, but they don't have the same presence. You know, it, it's a couple. I, actually, it, it is one, but the presence is very small for, you know, some of these smaller newspapers and they're not getting any help because they don't have any investments. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about the money more than it is about you know, covering the things that go on in the community. And I think that's where it, I think it, we may need to create some sort of legislation where it's protecting local media, yeah. you know, and investing in local media, but it also needs to allow people to be watchdogs of the government as well. So it's hard to remedy those two things because you don't want to, you know, and I, I think that hurts sports a lot too, for instance, like if you're covering high school sports, the government has nothing to do with <laughs> what you're doing right then and there, especially if it's a private school, if it's a public school, yes, you have, you know, it's a government funded mm -hmm. um, program, but like those things hurt, you know, a lot of those things hurt high school sports coverage because it's not about us. It's more or less about the state of journalism as a whole, um, you know, and then if you get a big school, like, you know, for instance, Penn State, I'm, nothing's going to hurt covering Penn State ever. <laughs> that Penn State is it. <laughs> Penn State is practically like the third, they, they call it the third professional sports team in Penn, Pennsylvania <laughs> um, because of how big the following is. But, yeah. you know, covering high school sports in those areas like that, you need to continue to keep investing in those yeah. communities. And, 
you know, having multiple people covering those things, because if you don't, things will fall to the wayside. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think, you know, I said, uh, I see it up here at, uh, in New Jersey as well. I think, you know, the high school and college sports scene, you know, I said, there's not enough attention paid to it, you know, especially with, we're not even talking about division one, we're talking about division two, II, division three schools. And um, it's, it's a real shame because, you know, I said, uh, those, those students, those coaches deserve, you know, said uh, the attention and, you know, you know, trying to play my part, you know, in that, uh, in covering, uh, I said, those schools and those athletes. But, you know, I, I know another hot button topic, and I don't know if you want to come, is especially with diversity in journalism as well. Uh, uh, Kyle, especially in sports, I wanted to ask you, you know, just to get your, um, get your uh, take on that as well. Well, I think, you know, one thing I always tell everybody about the diversity in sports journalism is that there aren't enough women of color you know, we see, we do see some people, men of color, like me and yourself included, but yeah. we don't see enough women in color, of color within sports journalism. And I think that those kind of things, not having them and their voices be uh, represented in sports journalism is honestly a travesty to me. You know, I, I think that women in color, women of color should be represented as much as possible because you know, there are so many athletes who, you know, especially in the WNBA, for instance, who are women of color. You know, they need to have their stories covered. And I think, you know, women's sports would be covered a lot better if you have women of color who yeah. also are representatives of those sports covering those sports, you know, or covering, you know, even men's sports as well, covering the NFL, covering the NBA, covering MLB. You know, covering ho hockey, especially, mm -hmm. you know, hockey needs uh, a, a contingent of, you know, women of color and, and people of color in general to be covering those sports because they don't necessarily have that culture of that. And maybe someone's turning a blind eye. For instance, the NHL has had a huge problem with it or what it seems like to be a huge problem of racism mm -hmm. within the sport. Or, or I guess within hockey in general, not just the NHL. And I, I feel like, you know, I've seen a number of women of color call it out. You know, I've seen black girl hockey, they, they cover it, they call it out on a consistent basis. But if you had more people like them within the sport, within, you know, the coverage of that, I think that, you know, things could be covered and be more equitable for people if you have more representation. So, you know, yes, it's great that people like you and I are there too, but, you know, I would love to see people like my sister, you know, I would love to see people like my mom, my grandmother. I would love to see, you know, a number of different people yeah. who are, you know, covering these things, people, you know, I'm friends with, People who go to historically black colleges and universities that are women, yeah, um, and you know, and it and it doesn't hurt that yes, we we have to be their greatest uh, supporters as well too, because they support us on a regular basis, and it's now for a time for us to step, even though we aren't, we're hundred, we're not, <laughs> we aren't, uh, you know, we're not the majority either, but the best that we can do is lift them up as well and get them the, their opportunities that they deserve. So. Yeah, you know, I, I think diversity would be better if we got more women of color in those sports. No, I agree. I mean, I I have a teenage daughter, and you know, she she's definitely she's on Instagram. She is, you know, wants to be a journalist, and <laughs> sees what I'm doing. I'm like, <laughs> I I hope you know you're in this sort of the long run because you have to be. You you know, I said, <laughs> going to go through your ups and downs, your peaks and valleys, and uh, you know, you have to again. You know, I said, uh, it's not short term, you know, I said, uh, seven years into this, seven, eight years into this, you know, I'm still working my way up the ladder. Uh, I, I have a couple more left. I, I actually, you know, um, I don't know if you want to comment is that, yeah, I'm, you know, I, sports and politics, of course, are intertwined and, you know, with social justice, you know, what's going on the past year, it's just not the pandemic, you know, it's, uh, with what's been going on, you know, I said, uh, with police as well. And, um, you know, uh, of course, you know, dealing right now with uh, the, you know, with George Floyd, you know, the trial and, you know, now Dante Wright, I wanted to, if you wanted to, you know, comment on that and just how that is, you know, 
entered the, you know, as far as, you know, covering you know, sports as well, uh, uh, Kyle? Well, I've always thought sports and politics have been intertwined. And, um, you know, whoever says that they have, and they, they've turned a blind eye to it. Um, you know, we always talk about Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson. I mean, mm-hmm. how, how big of political commentary is it yeah. to be the first black baseball player in the MLB? Yeah. Um, you know, how, how big of a political commentary is it to say that I'm not fighting the Viet Cong, you know, for Muhammad Ali to say what he said or for him to, you know, tra- for him to convert to Islam? You know, I think those things are incredibly political, you know, especially with the way that one, you know, people have treated black people and two people have treated the Muslim community in in America. Um, You know, and not only that, but then you have the Vietnam War and all the people that were considered to be enemies because they, you know, when it came to, I, I guess, the Vietnam War, when everyone was saying, okay, well, you aren't patriotic if you don't fight for this war where so many Americans came back and weren't treated correctly when they came back from the war because they were seen as, you know, outsiders and Mm -hmm. they weren't, you know, given the same veterans rights as, you know, maybe other war vets were given. Um, So I I just think so many things, I mean, we, we've seen it all throughout history. We've seen, you know, people stand up against racism, um, multiple times i can't i can't count how many times um you know what was it four or five years ago when adam jones had you know things thrown at him and called the n-word and things like that i mean that's political you know we can say racism isn't political but it is political you know especially when it's legislated um so i i i can't i can't stress enough when people say that sports and politics aren't intertwined, I, I can't tell you all, I can't tell them all how wrong it is to, to believe that. Yeah. I wanted to uh, switch to your family, uh, the support you received from them. And I, I think uh, I, I definitely didn't want to leave this out. You're a cancer survivor. And I, I think it, it's so important that, you know, we, we, we talk about that. I mean, I, you know, God bless that you, you know, said have, or you know healthy and doing well can you talk about just those two issues and just you know uh kyle yes um you know i always think i mean my family they're my biggest um you know support group for sure um i've always relied on them for you know guidance and you know a number of other things and over the past two years i mean it's been tough it's it's been so many things that have been tough like you know, I had I had cancer and then, you know, who I would argue is the the reason why I'm doing the things that I'm doing now and, you know, covering sports and being so involved in sports. My grandfather, I mean, he passed away in September from COVID. So when you had those two things, um, you know, kind of affect you, you need two people. I mean, you need to have people in your corner and there's nothing more important in my life than my family, you know, and um and I think those having a family that is so strong and being able to get over and get through certain things that are, you know, crushing to be the, to say the least. I mean, that that's incredibly important. And I can't, yeah. I can't stress enough how important they've been to me. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be in the place that I'm at right now without my family. And, um, you know, sometimes my mom, I, <laughs> You know, my mom is probably, it's so funny. My mom is probably my biggest critic, but she's also my biggest, uh, my biggest backbone. Um, My mom will get on me about some of the smallest things, but, you know, I also know that that's her, that's the way she shows love. And she holds me to a high standard. Yeah. And that's the standard that I always want to be at. I always want to be at a higher standard because I have someone like my mom who's going to hold me accountable. Mm-hmm. And now I also have my girlfriend too, who, you know, she holds me accountable as well. So, you know, I, having those people behind me and my friends as well, I can't, can't tell you how much, how many friends have, you know, reached out to me and told me how much they, they just appreciate me sharing this, sharing my story 
sharing what I've had to go through because it's made it easier for them to get through the things. And, you know, I've also talked about, you know, dealing with mental health too. Um, going through some of those tough times, going through COVID, going through, I mean, I had COVID back in January. I had, uh, you know, had the cancer, had, you know, all these different health issues. I've had hernia surgery and all this other stuff. And, you know, my family has been sick from COVID, you know, and having those friends to be able to say, okay, well, you know, we really appreciate you sharing things with us, but we also appreciate the fact that, you know, you've been honest about so many different things. I, that, I appreciate them for, you know, hearing me out and, you know, listening to what I'm going through because they didn't have to do that, you know. They could turn all the way and just say, okay, well, that has nothing to do with us, but they didn't do that. They s stood by me. They supported me and, you know, I'll continue to support them through, uh, through whatever they're going through as well. No, it's very inspirational. It takes a lot of courage, Kyle, because you've been, as you said, you talk about being open and honest, especially like on social media, which you have been. And I think a lot of people, again, have just been in awe of that. And they've, you know, uh, you've seen the overwhelmingly, you know, positive reaction to that. Uh, can you just have what that means to you? I mean, I just, to see like, you know, people across, you know, probably the country, the globe, you know, just being able to respond to you and, you know, again, relate to what, you know, you have uh, been through. All right. I, I, man, I can't, I can't talk about it enough. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I thank so many people for it because they, like I said, they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to be behind me. They didn't have to support me, but they did. And, you know, when, when people, I've, I've heard so many negative things about people as a whole, you know, the whole country or, you know, the world in general or how like, you know, people are selfish and all this other stuff. And I think honestly, inherently, I think everyone's a good person. You know, people are inherently good. It's just certain things you learn in life to, to become a mean spirited person, you know, but we can be inherently good and treat people with, with kindness on a, on a, consistent basis and i've seen that from so many people that follow me and people that i follow that they'll reach out to me and tell me hey we really care about you or we really care about what you're going through yeah. or we really want to support you as much as possible and those things are so incredible to me and you know i, I respect that on a on the deepest level that i possibly can how has this past year been for you? like you know you talk about covid and you know covering games and, you know, I, I have to ask, you know, what that has been like for you, you know, since you had it and like, you know, now, uh, uh, you know, you're back, you know, said uh, in-person covering, just, you know, how that, you know, is uh, panned out for you, uh, Kyle. So after, after I had it, I want to say about like two weeks or three weeks or four weeks after I actually got the shot. Um, so I got my first shot. Got my second shot three weeks after, you know, when I go to cover games, I'm wearing a mask. I used to wear a face shield. Now it's gotten so hot that the face shield, you know, I'm breathing so hard and it starts <laughs> falling up. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I had the face shield, I had gloves, I had all this other stuff. I used to wear goggles at one point. Mm. Um, you know, I, I looked like I was about to conduct a science experiment <laughs> at one point or, or, or go do surgery. Um, yeah. So those, those things are, you know, I've kind of scaled back some of the protection that I use to, you know, go cover games, but I'm still writing, you know, and I'm staying far away from people. Like I'm not up yeah. really close to anyone. When I was covering basketball, I was, I had to be like, I was very covered when I covered, covered basketball. Yeah. Now that I'm back covering outdoor sports, it's a lot easier to, you know, just be spaced out and everyone's wearing masks. So even including the players on the field. So yeah. I've been, I felt more safe. Um, you know, I've, I've taken all the precautionary measures to, to keep myself safe too and keep everyone else safe. Yeah, no, definitely. That's, that's really good to hear. You know, uh, I think, uh, actually I wanted to ask you, um, another great uh, achievement was, uh, you know, back 2016, I read that you volunteered, you know, for the, for the presidential campaign that, I mean, can you talk about that? I mean, you said, uh, you know, that, that's something that, 
a lot of people don't get to do, but uh, how that, you know, how that experience, you know, worked out, uh, Kyle? Well, that was, it was fun. Um, so I know in 2016, <laughs> I always laugh about it because I'm like, that was the first time I really got into politics and I really like understood things on a deeper level. Like I always felt like, you know, after 2012, the, 2012 was the first time I ever got to vote. And I voted for, you know, President Obama um, then. And in 2016, I voted, well, I voted in the primary for Bernie Sanders. And that's whose campaign that I worked on. And just seeing all so many other young people who were energized and just excited to be able to come vote for somebody who didn't necessarily look like them or was as young as they were, but had that same energy as they did that was really cool and you know it was a bunch of older people that were totally different a lot of working class older people who voted for bernie sanders too so you know i got to know so many different groups of people from a swath of different walks of life and um you know that that really was you know that that became an inspiration to what i kind of believe in now and, and you know how I would like to conduct myself now. Final question is um, what your message would be for, for younger people, you know, aspiring journalists, you know, who want to get into this field, uh, whether, I mean, you see high school kids now doing it, even younger. I mean, I, I was covering the, the uh, NCAA tournament, the women's NCAA tournament. I think there was a girl 11 or 12 years old that was asking you know, players and coaches uh, questions. And I'm like, wow, like I really feel old now. Uh, but, you know, what, uh, and Ian, for people who are, uh, have graduated from college as well, what um, your, you know, advice would be for them, uh, Kyle? Network, 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 network. And use social media to network. Um, you know, I, that's something I, I feel like a lot of, you know, you, you meet a lot of journalists and I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm the outlier in terms of like being super, super extroverted, you know, like I'm, I want to meet everyone mm -hmm. and I don't feel like a lot of journalists are like that. So it's kind of, it's easier for me to say, go out there and network because I don't, even though I might not know someone, I'm going to go talk with someone. And I'm super energetic about that. And I love helping people out to get to know others. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, that it's tough. Like, especially now, hard, you know, being able to network because you don't have those big events. You know, you're not having those big journalistic conventions like you did with NABJ or NAHJ yeah. or, you know, some of the other organizations as well. Um, and, when you don't have those, it's kind of harder to meet people in person um, yeah. and go grab coffee. You're, you're not going to be able to grab coffee like you were. You're not going to be yeah. able to go grab dinner or, you know, lunch or things like that. And so what I tell everyone is use social media, promote yourself or just reach out. I mean, I've, I can't tell you how many young reporters have reached out to me through Twitter, yeah. you know. And um, it's funny because me and you actually met through, what was it, LinkedIn? I think so. so. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's, that's a perfect example. We, we, you know, connected on LinkedIn and then we got to know each other. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think a lot of other young journalists, that's, those are the things that they need to do. They need to follow people on Twitter. They need to learn the way that they're writing too. read their articles, get to know how they conduct themselves. Um, and then pick their brains, you know, I, I'm willing to talk. I know some reporters aren't willing to talk. I don't, I mean, I, I understand, yeah. but that's not what I'm going to do. I just know that me personally, if somebody asks me, Hey, can, can I have some help on something? I'll immediately answer that. And, um, yeah. you know, reach out to other young reporters. It doesn't necessarily need to be somebody that's older than you. It could be somebody that's younger. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be somebody that's the same age as you, you know, contemporaries, like, those things will allow you to become a better reporter and to get to know how things kind of work. Um, you know, I, I had a, uh, it was a reporter on the Ravens beat, uh, Aaron Kassinitz, who now, I mean, he, I think he works for Dallas Morning News now, but Aaron was a, uh, he covered the Ravens for Penn Live. And so what Aaron would do, 
I talked to him and I'm like, Hey man, like, you know, can I, can I pick your brain on something? He's like, you know what? Yeah. Let's, let's talk. And Aaron's only a year older than me. So, and ironically enough, I ended up working with his girlfriend at the sun <laughs> the next year. <laughs> so it, it's just really funny how, um, you know, getting to know people and understanding that you can talk with anyone and, and so many people will be willing to help. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I wanted to, you know, you made a, a, a good point is that being a part of an organization like NABJ and like, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's important, you know, I said being able to connect with other journalists. And then, I mean, we talked about social media, I mean, you know, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, and now, uh, you know, what uh, you've seen now this clubhouse app that is, you know, uh, created is just another tool, you know, where, you know, again, journalists, you know, can come together and share ideas. Uh, can you, I mean, just talk about that. I mean, just like the world, I mean, every day, I mean, it's a 24, seven, 365, you know, news cycle, Kyle. I mean, you know, just, uh, just to see, it's just, uh, just incredible. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, you know, you see, like you said, you see clubhouse, you see Twitter, you see everything just breaking at, a, yeah. at, at, at like such a quick speed. And so you have to be on top of everything. And a lot of young reporters have learned that better than some of us, you know, and I'm as young as I am, it's some kid out there that probably knows how to do, <laughs> you know, 500 different things on their phone. So use those things to your advantage. If you have, if you have social media skills, you're going to beat out a lot of other reporters, but at the same time, you have to also know how to report the correct thing. And that's something I learned from the older reporters is that while I may have these social media skills over them, they also have the connections to get things right. Yeah. And getting things right is way more important than getting them out first, in my opinion. So please do your due diligence, get to know people, talk with people as much as possible. And understand that it's more important to get things out right than they are to get things out first. And that's, you know, I guess my partner message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the floor is yours, Kyle. If there's anything you want to add, I, I hope I have, uh, you know, touched on all this, uh, all, all the topics. I, I hope, you know, if there's anything you else you want to add, Kyle. Oh, well, I, I feel like everything's, uh, you know, everything was pretty good. I, I was able to, you know, kind of go over a lot of things I've learned in my journalism career and, um, you know, just to be able to impart that knowledge on some other, other young reporters would be, uh, that I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Hey, you're, you're a great role model, not only for, for younger people, but for older people, Kyle, and, uh, you know, congratulations on your success in your journalism career, you know, and then now upcoming here, you know, with the Center Daily Times and, uh, you know, wishing you all the best and, you know, good health as well. Thank you so much.